What's up, brother? Boy. How you doing, bro? I just wanted to call you and talk a little bit about Guam. Guam. Guam was crazy, bro. Guam was a wild trip, bro. <laughs> So back in September, I was asked to go visit Guam and speak at their first annual Travel Talks Digital Global Summit. I got to share a little bit about my story. And how you do backflips. Yeah, and, and also how I do backflips. <laughs> but yeah, we also got to go out and spend the week exploring Guam. The team consisted of myself, Bryn, Jordan, Ben, and Colin. A group of really cool guys. We all became friends really fast. The first time we went out to Gun Beach, stopped by this one tree and it was full of these black butterflies, full. I've never seen that many in my life. Uh, yeah, the whole week, they were just everywhere. Going through the city, it's, it's so weird. You know, you're, you're driving through and there's all these buildings and like houses and stuff, but the sky is just full of butterflies. <laughs> well, you guys are having a jolly good time on the beach. I was stuck in Hong Kong. It was striking at the airport, but eventually got a flight and made my way down to join you guys. Yeah, I was a little concerned for you because I knew you hadn't gotten like any sleep on your way there. And then the second you land, <laughs> we had a skydive booked. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I was gonna miss that opportunity. I literally landed and caught a taxi and met you guys there. Straight off the plane onto another plane, eh? Yeah, <laughs> but then it got cancelled. Yeah, so due to uh, the weather, the skydive got cancelled, but Bryn, you're still a savage for, for committing <laughs> to that and just getting ready to go right into it. But instead, you decided, okay, well, uh, if we can't skydive and it's raining, well, I guess we might as well just go hiking. It's been non-stop raining today, but we're not going to let that slow us down. We've been hiking in the jungle for about the past 30 minutes, and uh, it's looking pretty beautiful so far. The water was pretty intense that day, but me and Ben just got in there right away and we got some epic stuff. Savage. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up on the east side for sunset in this really cool coastline area. Uh, tons of cliffs and jagged rocks, but it's all covered by shrubs and greenery, and it was incredibly beautiful. Got some really cool race drone shots out there. And we're getting this really crazy drone shot right now where Bryn is pulling back. Look where he's at. He's hiding over there from the drone. <laughs> uh, but the drone's pulling back. Uh, revealing this incredible scenery and then it shows me jump off the cliff. I shouldn't have been operating machinery by this stage. I think, what, 42 hours with no sleep? And I'm like, yeah, bro, just send it. The next day, I finally got a couple hours sleep in me, but we were up for sunrise to go spend a day out on the water. So we met this one really cool guy named Chase who runs charter boats and is an underwater photographer. He was able to take us out on one of his boats and right away we went to this one cliff jump spot that was about 60 feet or so and no hesitation I just jumped right in and started climbing those rocks. Uh, which was honestly the scariest part, climbing up that thing. It was pretty sketchy and I remember there was one point where I was about like 30 feet up, halfway up and um, a crab just like came out of the hole that my hand was in and I freaked out and that was terrifying but yeah I think thankfully I didn't let go but once I was up it was beautiful sunrise was popping got to the edge and threw I remember throwing my shoes down Ben was down there calling everyone's ready <laughs> filming and I just sent a gainer first thing gainers for breakfast that's just uh, how you do it my favorite way to wake up for sure get the adrenaline going You were pulling in the tuna, bro. Chase just out of nowhere uh, pulls up a tuna and uh, all of a sudden just pulls out the heart and then offers for me to eat it. And I was like, no, thank you. 
You're a savage, and then you ended up doing it. Hey, it's it's tradition, bro. It's apparently your first tuna out in Guam. You're supposed to eat the heart. I, I gave it. This is something go. about blood. I remember remember when you and I were out in Beijing. I, I happily ate a scorpion, a live scorpion, oh, two of them geez. too, right? And apparently those are supposed to be cooked, but yeah. we just ate them raw because we didn't know. <laughs> But uh, that day, the conditions were pristine. Uh, the water clarity was amazing. And that day, I really pushed myself in, in free diving. I, was, I don't think I've ever dove that deep before. And there was this one room with this light beam just coming right into it uh, in a sunken ship and it's super gloomy. It's almost like something out of a horror movie, but so cool to go in there and explore it. We're all very pleasantly surprised by what we've seen so far here in Guam. I feel like this place is pretty underrated, but it's incredibly beautiful and I'm really happy that we're out here. So it's like 6 a.m. We just got up to the top of this mountain. Got a bunch of low fog, clouds are lighting up, sunrise is looking beautiful. Let's go check it out. Crazy conditions, kind of windy, kind of cloudy, but made for a beautiful sunrise. And then from there, we immediately headed to Lower Segua Falls, which by default meant driving through several miles of mud. That was an experience. Yeah, we got a lift out there from some of the local guys. They love to spend time in the mud, and there's no shortage of it out on the yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. That was crazy. I've definitely never done anything like that before. That's so savage, bro. <laughs> we were out there for hours, and the whole point of it was to eventually get to this waterfall. I pull out my race drone and see it for the first time with that and I was honestly blown away. It is this little oasis surrounded by like pristine palm trees and this beautiful waterfall. Man, you, you had you had a crazy idea. Your, your goal was to what? Get a, a fog machine down there? Wow, I can't, I still can't believe that that happened. But. <laughs> so uh, we ended up hiking down there with the fog machine. Going down was definitely a challenge, but I was like, you know, it's gonna be worth it at the end of the day. You know, the shots we're gonna get are definitely gonna be worth it. Uh, but plot twist, of course, once we get down to the bottom, it just doesn't work, and no one, no one can figure out why. Just nothing, no signs of life. So, of course, we gotta get over the fact that it's not working and just keep going, but uh, we definitely enjoyed our time out there. Nice, get up here, boy. It's intense. <laughs> Carrying get a fog it. machine that doesn't even work through the jungle. Yeah. I love it, Ben. I love it. I love it. Pretty unbelievable. The next day, we were back in the jungles. Um, it was absolutely beautiful, following this ridge line and to find this sacred cave, which was pretty incredible. We had to pray to the spirits just to make sure that we were allowed to enter the cave. We got their blessing, but yeah, there's just something about smoke and a bit of slow motion that just looks so good on camera. <laughs> Yeah, we got to just finish the day off hanging out on the beach. Another epic warm sunset. And then the next day, uh, we were able to make skydiving finally work. Morning, morning, morning. Just such a, a different way to start the day. My body was just like, what is going on? <laughs> What 
What were your thoughts going up on the plane? Dude, I just love that sort of thing. And the fact that we had a sunrise in the clouds. I think just before I jumped out, I can't remember what I was doing, but I was in such a good mood. We are in the jungle. Where are we? It's priest pools. It's crazy because it's a magical place that feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, but it's actually just a short walk from a neighborhood on Guam's southernmost village. I remember as soon as we got there, I was just like, okay, I need to get a crazy race drone shot of this. So we continued hiking and poor Colin, I don't know what it was, but the mosquitoes loved that boy so much. Oh yeah, Colin got wrecked by the mosquitoes. <laughs> I wish girls liked me this much. We had hiked down into Sela Bay. It was about an hour hike. And then we came out next to this really cool stone bridge, which was built by the Spanish colonial government in the 18th century. It started pouring rain, which was actually very magical. There's some of the shots that you got there were crazy, man. The day was not over. Not, not even close to being over, bro. We were still planning on going into a cave to uh, actually scuba dive in a cave at nighttime. The hour long hike back up in the dark was pretty intense. We definitely got lost a few times. Oh, hey. Hey, what you got there in your hands, boy? Oh, just watch the step. You got an <laughs> We finally got to this cave, and then it was Colin's moment to shine. We went in there with uh, a bunch of loom cubes and lit up the cave, which was spectacular to see that. The water is as clear as it can get. It's like perfectly crystal clear. A little bit chilly though, but once we lit that area up, it was just magical. It was just so fun. And you just kept wanting to dive down. I think we were there till way past midnight. And we were all just like, how are we still functioning after such a day? We're about to go surf and have some fun. Today's our last day out here, so we're gonna enjoy every moment and uh, hope we catch some waves. Ooh, Let's get do it. it. Just a chill little surf session to start the day, and then we headed to the fish eye, which is basically like a fish tank in the ocean, but for humans. We walked down the stairwell and we're down here and we're able to look into the oceans and uh, we're about to go jump in there, swim around. We saw a shark out there and uh, we got some sick photos, man. Some of those photos, I think those are some of the, my, my, my favorite underwater photos. Yeah, it looks like a spaceship, bro. bro. Yeah, it's, it's like this spaceship looking thing. Temperature's beautiful. Just had a fun time. So we wrapped up after that and Daniel actually had a skateboard on him and we just ran and we decided like, hey, let's get some shots of you ripping around in the streets of Guam on a skateboard. Yeah, that was definitely a, a rushed little sequence, but we were able to pull some clips. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> we had booked a little Cessna flight for the end of the day for sunset out at the airport, so we had to get there as soon as possible. the best way to end the trip. You know, I thought that I had built up this idea of what Guam looks like in my head. And then we got to go up into the plane and see it from there. And it was stunning. It's it, crazy. It was crazy. The cloud conditions, the lighting. It was honestly one of the funner trips that I've done in a, in a while. 
let's let's uh, let's book it in for 2020, bro. Let's make it happen. I'm down. Let's do a little reunion out in Guam again. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, I gotta hang up my washing, bro. So right. I'll catch you later, and uh, I'll chat to you in a bit, bro. Sounds good, brother. Talk to you later.